In college, myself and a friend wanted to start a beginner Dungeons & Dragons club where people could join, play, and learn. At this time, I met another guy, I'll call him Toby, while waiting for class, who helped me with a math question. He mentioned how he also likes D&D and was very experienced, so I invited him. He jumped on board immediately. He said that he wouldn't mind helping others learn. He proceeded to message me on Discord multiple times before the first meeting, asking about all the details. Everything was pretty okay, though. Toby would occasionally go a little over bored with the role playing by actually getting up and yelling at others, but I just brushed it off. He would tend to upstage other players, interrupt, and argue with other players about anything and everything he didn't like. I asked everyone after the session if they were okay with Toby, and they basically all said, yeah, he's just a little rowdy. I was beginning to think it was just me until the second game. My previously stated friend took a turn DMing while I played. I joined as a tiefling cleric with a whole plague doctor outfit so they couldn't see any part of me. That's cool. During the game, he called me a in real life and tried to rip off my character's mask against my and the other player's wishes. I don't remember when this part happened, but around this time, Toby asked me to eat dinner with him. I asked if anyone else was going, and he said he asked, but no one else could make it. I agreed, thinking it was not a date. I was stupid, because after an hour at a restaurant where it felt like he tried to one-up me in everything we talked about, he sent me a text the next day clarifying that it was, in fact, a date, and if I want to continue a relationship with him. I said no, and that I was very uncomfortable with how this was going. He ended up not coming to any sessions afterwards. Wonder why? What a mystery this is. The whole thing just sucks in general. This guy sounds really annoying. But for the love of God, when you're out on a date or just having a conversation with someone, please don't try to one-up them at every turn. It doesn't make you cool. It makes you extremely unlikable. start off, let's do something a little different. D&D players of Reddit, what is the stupidest way your character has died? Wasn't my character, but I DM'd a game that had the player characters decide to climb on the back of a dragon to kill it. I rolled with it for as long as I could, fudging what I needed to keep it interesting, but once the dwarf said he was going to jump into the dragon's mouth and kill it from the inside, I realized I needed to let nature take its course. Then, the dude rolled a 20, which in my games is an automatic success regardless of what you're trying to do. Rule bendy, but it's usually very fun. And I had him go inside the dragon without issue. Then he proceeded to do zero damage for four turns and get digested. Next up, that spot is a place of great power. It's where all the planes of existence meet. I touched it and was simultaneously ripped into every plane of existence. Ooh, what do we have here? One of the player characters was a pixie, whose combat role was to fly over enemies and use ranged weapons, including vials of explosive oil. She got hit with a goblin's arrow and hurt enough to pass out. She fell from the sky and hit the ground. DM rolled for damage to her equipment, including the explosive oil, which got damaged and therefore exploded. So we all burst out laughing at the image of a pixie falling from the sky and exploding like a bomb. At least they took the death well. The bard rolled a 20 on the charisma check trying to seduce a dragon in the middle of a fight, so everyone had taken a few hits. DM got a look on his face like he's been waiting for this exact thing to happen for years, and says without smirking, over the sounds of battle and shouting adventures, the dragon is captivated by the most beguiling melody has ever heard. It instantly loses interest in all around it and begins barreling towards its source. None of you speak draconic, but if you did, you would know that the dragon was singing of its love for the bard. He then said deadpan to our bard, roll constitution. Why? said the bard. Male dragon. And that's how our tiefling bard got hanky-panky to death. Okay. <laughs> Crushed by a giant centipede that I was on the back of, dragon's dogma style. It crawled on the ceiling of a very high room, and I did enough damage to it to fall, but I rolled crap to try and climb on top of it to soften the blow, so it fell on me. The damage from it falling and landing on me killed me outright. Longest character I've ever played, four years, and was the last remaining original character of the campaign. And finally, a mimic, disguised as a toilet. My party was in the next room, laughing. That last one implies that the party knew somehow and just, like, trapped them in there, which, hmm, that sucks. I like how most of these aren't necessarily horror stories. It seems like these are a lot more casual games. And, you know, in those games, sometimes more dorky, more lovable character deaths are going to happen and be more than welcome. Different games are going to treat death differently. In my own homebrew campaign, we only had one character death, one perma character death in two years. It was very dramatic and there were tears involved. In something like this, it's going to be a lot more fun, a lot more casual, and that's okay. Everyone's going to play this game differently. Just make sure 
sure you have a session zero to let your players know which kind of game you want to play. This was some years ago. I finally had the chance to join a D&D &D game. Joy! It didn't matter, I was a newbie in a party of 10 plus year veterans, or so my friend assured me. Being a total beginner, I didn't realize the problems that started even before Session Zero. The DM made a Facebook group where he'd upload anything related to his homebrew campaign, the first of these posts being the world map. I asked what kind of world it would be, so I could play my character appropriately. His only answer was, just think of any fantasy Isike. Isike, right? Was the story lighthearted or grim? Isiki. Was the world medieval or modern fantasy? Isekai. Was the world name scale and state? Isekai. -e. <laughs> I even tried reverse searching the picture he'd uploaded to try and get some idea of the place and was promptly told off for trying to metagame. I gave up and decided to go with a social butterfly gnome bard focused on support. She was three foot of youthful naivete, ready to better the world. She fitted into the group like a square peg in a round hole. To be honest, it wasn't the other player's fault. No one had any guidelines to follow, so the party was scattered all across the grim, dark tomfoolery spectrum. There was a dusk blade trying to find his mentor to kill her next to a princess rogue based on an MLP character. I wasn't sure of being able to keep up the pace with experienced players, so I asked to be introduced into the game a few sessions later, to have time to observe the game firsthand. DM agreed, and the first session started. It was only role-playing, and it was fine. Then the problems started. We used whatever was available as tokens, and all of us being into anime and games, we had quite the keychain slash figures collection to be placed on the map. I immediately recognized a player's token as a route in one of my favorite fantasy novels. To be exact, a series of keychains where the guys were dressed up in Greek togas according to their star signs. I mentioned it to the guy in an attempt to fun fact icebreaker, and he exploded! He glared at me, angrily muttering that I was wrong, that he hated me, and that I didn't know anything about that character, and that I was- and it was obviously a girl dressed up as an angel. I don't think his character ever spoke to mine, but honestly, I was sort of thankful for that. I didn't know how to deal with that player after my friend offhandly mentioned that player wanted his mage to be a high knee stocking wearing naive but haughty 10 year old girl that made a point of having lace panties listed in her equipment and still resented that the DM made him age her up to at least 18 years old. I'm sorry, what the fuck? The problems just kept on coming, as it became more and more evident that a player, the resident min-maxer, was fudging his rolls and padding his AC in damage. He was getting called out at least once per session, but would quickly go back to his shenanigans the next week. Then somehow, I became the problem player. Remember that I planned my character as a support slash utility bard? Well, there was another bard in the party, but the player went full DPS mode. She was actively encouraged to switch to a mage by Duskblade, another player, but she refused to play anything but bards, and the DM, aka her husband, didn't press the matter any further. Instead, he began making comments about how the party had low damage output because there were two bards, and that he had to balance down the encounters just because we weren't hitting hard enough. During one particularly grueling combat, I had enough of his snide remarks and decided to use the crossbow my bard carried around just in case. My fun-sized, two-legged ambulance of a character dealt one hit point of damage. The DM sighed and told me not to waste my turns like that, and I should focus on healing, since that was all my character was good for. <laughs> The next session, we managed to avoid combat using an invisibility spell, levitation ring, and a bag of containment to trap a searching eagle. It was mind-boggling, stupid, but it was effective, and the most fun everyone at the table had in months. But at the end of the session, the DM chided us for avoiding encounters instead of doing the right thing and fighting the 15 archers in a literal uphill battle. Ironically, everything went downhill from there. By this time, the plague was on full swing, so we tried to play online. Not wanting to use Roll20, I took the time to teach everyone how to use a collab canvas as a map, even drawing portraits to use as tokens for the players, and terrain sections for the dungeon master. To say I wanted to keep playing was an understatement. Who hurt you? Why didn't it stick? So when our second mid-boss fight came around and the evil lich left Duskblade with one hit point, I thought my time to shine had arrived. 
My gnome was the only small character in the party, thus was the slowest of all the player characters, but I rushed to save our companion, using spells to double my velocity, even dropping down a wall, taking some damage, to reach him before the boss attacked him again. The turns were the boss, the duskblade, then me. I was less than 15 feet away from my companion. I yelled in-game to crawl towards me to heal him, and then the evil lich decided to heal Duskblade using false life? Even Duskblade was confused by this move, but the DM said the Lich was enjoying fighting him, so he didn't want to end him just yet. The Duskblade I was trying to save was saved and was able to keep fighting. All the while, I was left behind in the metaphorical and literal ditch, having used up several spell slots to try and do what the DM had told me to do, only for him to render my efforts useless right before mocking my decisions. Not gonna lie, I cried a little about that. It seemed like nothing I did was good enough, and along with the stress of being quarantined, it really wore down my mental well-being. I excused myself, turned off my computer, and tried to sleep it off. I woke up two hours later, only to find out the DM had booted me from the game. According to my friend, I was rude to leave right before the big bad evil guy fight, and he didn't want players that didn't commit to the game. This was the coup de grace because remember that cheating min-maxer? Well, he had waited for him to return to the game for almost three weeks, but I was dropped the moment I had to step away from the game for the first time since I began playing. There were a lot of red flags I left out, like Min Maxer constantly hitting on any female player, inappropriate comments about me and my character from the DM, Bard ignoring the game to draw in her notebook, etc. Last I heard, the game collapsed in on itself. Rogue and Duskblade left because of work commitments. Mage and Min Maxer ended up refusing to play with each other, and DM and Bard had a baby, and it was hard to balance a newborn with the game. It really soured my D&D experience for a while, but then I realized I didn't have to put up with that kind of people, and it was a breath of fresh air. It wasn't until I was forced out of the game, I noticed how awful it made me feel. I had been getting anxious just thinking about that week's game and how it was getting close. I had to pep talk myself into waking up during game days, otherwise I'd stay all day in bed. It was bad. It took me a while to accept being excluded from the game, but I finally learned that oh so true motto, that no D&D is better than bad D&D. Well said. I know I was yanking the writer's chain a little bit during the story, but at the end of the day, I do understand where this mentality comes from. When you're in the middle of a social engagement, it sometimes can be hard to really process how bad and awkward things are getting. Here, it's much more the former. I mean, seriously, that whole 10-year-old character thing, just ugh, what the hell? That's horrible. I'm not gonna think about that anymore, I'm not gonna explain it anymore, because I'm sure you guys all know why that kind of thing is bad, really, really bad. But look, point is that in a D&D &D game, in any sort of game, if you feel like you're being actively excluded by the group, it's not a group that you should stay with. It's worth it to talk to them at least, but here, this group is acting actively hostile, which is just never a good thing. There is an unbelievable amount of red flags here, and I can't believe there's stuff that wasn't even talked about. I mean, I haven't even gotten to the DM's horrible world building that the story opened with, but this all just sucks. Honestly, I don't blame you for getting turned off from TTRPGs for a while. I mean, I get it, but I do hope that if you want to play these games again, I hope you do find a great game and a great group. Quick bit of backstory, I'm 33 and have been playing TTRPGs for as long as I can remember. I basically never left that little kid stage of playing around, I just evolved it a little as I grew up. Usually a forever GM, but I'm okay with it for the most part because crafting stories and worlds for my players to interact with and contribute to the development of is like my high. Collaborative storytelling and creation is what I love. I'm also a small time YouTuber slash streamer with a focus on designing my own game stories, settings, and mechanics. Mostly video games, but I'll cover TTRPGs and card games too. Last year, Hasbro released a new system called Essence 20, which operates like a combination of D&D 5e and Savage Worlds, with their flagship title being Power Rangers. Well, my wife got me the Power Rangers sourcebook for my birthday, and I got the itch to try streaming a game group for the Power Rangers to see how it goes. I sent out some invites to a number of my usual gaming friends, as well as some other streamers and video personalities I've collaborated with in the past to gauge interest. Enter the problem player, we'll call him X. X was extremely eager to try the game. His initial reaction to the invitation was, and I quote, Oh, hell yeah. 
and I've always wanted to try a Power Rangers game. So once I had gotten confirmation from all the interested prospective players, I went ahead to put together a Discord group message, where I laid down the story premise, linked all the PDF handbooks, and set my expectations. I invited open discussion for anybody to set their own expectations too. You know, all the basics for setting a good group dynamic. After some discussion, we all agreed to a specific time every other Thursday. However, until the actual game itself, we'd be meeting every Thursday for planning. Since the system was entirely new to everyone, including myself, and the book is essentially a rushed first draft that requires an additional FAQ to clarify things, also half the group being entirely new to TTRPGs in general, I knew it would take some time to get the ball rolling, and I was okay with that. I'm a pretty easygoing, laissez-faire sort of guy most of the time, and pretty adaptable as long as people are making an effort and actually trying. I wasn't going to sweat it. Except X was not trying. Our first session zero came and X did not make it, said his uncle was over for dinner. No problem, I thought. I only announced that we'd begin planning these sessions a couple days ago. He probably had those family plans before that. We just focus on getting him caught up next week. So our second Session Zero rolled around, and to his credit, X did show up for only one hour. That wasn't even half the time we had agreed to. And for the time he was there, he kept trying to talk over everyone constantly. Like, over every single thing. Like, every single thing. Like, if someone said something that reminded him of this other thing in some game property he likes, he'd tell us. It was a constant derailing of the conversation. Then on two separate occasions, despite the entire purpose of the discussion being to get him caught up, he went AFK and told everyone to keep going without him. It was almost a blessing he left early, so he could actually get more done. After that disaster, I knew I had to rein X in and go over some basic etiquette, including respecting the limited time we have to schedule the game and to not steamroll over everyone else. I also knew that I'd have to get him caught up in general. No problem though, I thought to myself, I can address both of these by scheduling a one-on-one -on -one catch up session with him specifically. So I offered to do just that and X agreed, saying he could do it on Tuesday. Well, Tuesday rolled around, suffice to say, X canceled on me partway through the day. I would have had to cancel myself anyway because my water heater burst, an entirely separate other horror story on its own, but I did not like the pattern that was developing here. Our third Thursday rolled around and lo and behold, X didn't make it. Relatives over for dinner again. And by the time they left, he was exhausted, as was my patience. At this point, I couldn't even get a hold of him long enough to tell him that getting a hold of him was a major problem. X did take the initiative to message me, which I foolishly took as a hopeful sign of change. He asked if we were still on for Tuesday to do a catch-up session one-on-one. -on -one. We never agreed to try another one, it's not like it was a standing scheduled event like group Thursday sessions, but I figured sure, I'll make the time since he took the initiative and showed the most initial excitement for the game. Tuesday rolls around and X is nowhere to be found. I checked his Twitch channel and found out he was streaming, okay? So I hopped into his chat and asked if something came up, are we still on or what? His reaction is to apologetically declare that he thought we were doing it on Wednesday, not Tuesday. And I'm like, dude, you were the one who set the day. I took time out of my schedule to accommodate the time that you said would work best. His excuse was that he's just busy this week planning his annual subathon, which was scheduled for Thursday. So I knew he wasn't going to make the session either now, which is great. At least that's a one-time event that on its own would be excusable. So I decided to foolishly give him one more chance and rescheduled for Wednesday, the day he somehow believed we were already scheduled for. Can you guess what happened next, my friends? If you said nothing, then you'd be absolutely correct. He didn't join the call, gave no notice, and wasn't even streaming this time, so I don't even know what was up. But I decided that enough was enough. The next morning, I sent him a message and was very polite and professional. I told him that I thought it would be better if he didn't participate in the game. Not that he had done any participating to begin with, because it requires a level of dedication and commitment that he didn't seem to be able to invest right now. I went on to tell him that it's okay if it's not a priority, and that it just didn't seem to be a good fit at this time. Friends, the passive-aggressive response I got made my blood boil. I mean, I said that before, and you insisted. Excuse me, I have been the most chill and non-pressuring GM around and never once insisted on anything. I asked and you expressed nothing but excitement and joy. You said all the times, or they were set with you in mind, and you still couldn't make the basic effort. So I told him as much, but in a much friendlier and still assertive way, and removed him from the Discord group. 
And that was that, or at least that would have been that, but my curiosity got the best of me. See, I noticed a pattern of behavior from X and wanted to make sure it wasn't just me. So I asked a mutual friend of ours, we'll call her Alice, her honest opinion about X. I ended up learning some pretty bad things. She also noticed X had a habit of telling white lies, almost pathologically. You see, Alice is making her own video game and gave some early builds to her friends, including me and X. X had played it on stream and was telling his viewers about the changes Alice was making on the game as his suggestions. Only there were no changes. He also said things like how a character based on him would have a whole dedicated storyline and even held a raffle for a demo code that Alice never agreed to. But then he said the winner was his sister. So, yeah. Look, I don't think X does these things intentionally. I don't think he's even aware of it most of the time. But gaming groups require constant, clear communication and commitment. And I've been in the game far too long to let myself get dragged down by bad behavior. Things are looking good now, though. We're still not 100% ready to start, but we're very close. All I can say is go, go, Power Rangers. I cannot believe you just made me say that. Joking aside, though, I seriously do wish you the best of luck in getting your campaign started. Yeah, gaming groups, they do require a level of commitment. Yes, you probably shouldn't make it a priority above everything, but it should be a priority somewhere. I mean, you shouldn't no-call no-show to something that you're doing for fun. That's something a lot of people unfortunately do, and yeah, it sucks, especially for your game master, who probably should be, putting in lots of work into making this game fun for you. You just not showing up, it shows a level of nonchalance that just sucks. Also, I definitely did not miss the cheeky little victim blame of, oh well, you're the one who wanted me here in the first place. Yeah. Nah, don't fall for that kind of thing. People try it way more often than they probably should. I really wish I didn't have to create a Reddit account to post here, but here I am. Light spoilers for Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So let's start the story by presenting the people involved. Me, as me, 26 male. DM, the DM, male in his 30s and the protagonist of the story. Incel Paladin, a player, male, I don't know the age, that was playing a paladin, and that character happened to be an incel. Mike and Nid and Otto know the other two players, not too relevant to the story, but they are mentioned. Friend 1, a sweet girl that unfortunately let DM live in her house for a couple of months, and friend 2, a good guy, another victim of the DM. The DM started the D&D 5th edition Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign, and he invited me as I was a recurrent player and, at the time, a good friend of his. He had some drama with friend 1 and friend 2, and at that time that led him to cancelling two campaigns I was in, but I didn't have all the info about exactly what happened, so I accepted the invite to this campaign. In session 0, Hui, Mike Nid, Autonome, and myself decided to make characters for the campaign, and I decided to make a traveling tiefling bard woman that I named Passion, as she was passionate about art, stories, and folklore. I wasn't expecting this decision in character to trigger these events, and to be fair, Nobody should. At the start of the campaign, an old goblin at the entrance tried to hit on my character, but I just thought of it as the DM making the pun of, I don't know, green old man? DM, in the middle of the first act of the campaign, decided to invite Incel Paladin to the group. He presented his character as an edgelord at first, but then the first time interacting with my character, he just said he, quote, stares at her huge boobs and blushes. I just... I just tolerated that, thinking that it would be a, a one-time thing. Yeah, I was wrong. The second time Incel Paladin interacted with my character, he let out a, I believe that women should stay in the kitchen. Yes, he seriously thought this was, I don't know, funny? My character expressed her disagreement and uh, he just went quiet. After some investigation, we found one of the ways to go to the Feywild, a mirror in a mirror maze. Most of the mirrors were destroyed because of the other characters when we entered previously. The ones that weren't destroyed were the ones I went through. So I used my brains and a little prestidigitation to fog them up instead. So we jumped into the second act of the campaign, but before that, the DM found it funny to add an old moribund dog as an attraction. Yeah, the DM thought that was funny. Hey, I'm going to my ninth rewatch of Into the Spider-Verse. You want to come? Oh, no, sorry, I can't. I just need to watch this video of this dying old dog slowly suffering through his life. It just fills me with such joy to watch it slowly go through its... 
So we're in the second act, we start traveling through a marsh, evading Herringon bandits. We found Sir Talavar, and eventually, we found a tavern with legs! So we get in, and we find some drinks. Mike and Id and Autonome drank fey dragon beer, and transformed into fey dragons that would lead to some creepy, I want fey dragon eggs, so copulate! From Incel Paladin. Meanwhile, Incel Paladin and my character just started drinking dwarven beer. Then, Incel Paladin accused my character of being a temptress, and distracting him with her massive t I mean, seriously, dude, are you Alos okay? Are you this weak? My character, annoyed, grabbed him by the ear and scooped him out of the tavern. The rest of the sessions weren't better, as in Sal Paladin started absorbing more and more of the acting time, while I could act as my character less and less. This got to the point that NPC started ignoring what I had to say and DM calling my character lust. By accident. Look, I'm a straight man and confident about it. But they managed to make me feel belittled, as a woman. Then, I had a Sunday one-shot with Friend 1 as a first-time DM and Friend 2 as the other player, and it was an amazing one-shot. Friend 1 as a first-time DM did an incredible job. After that, we had a talk and they told me about the crap that DM has done. While living with Friend 1, he would do nothing, not clean the room, and let a lot of the takeout boxes pile in a tower the height of a person. I swear, the walls of that room still stink. Also, almost broke her washing machine and even left the gas on, potentially making a disastrous accident. She, alongside her partner, had to find an excuse to kick him out. You didn't need to look very hard. Constantly lied and belittled friend too, knowing full well that he will bite his tongue, gaslit us into thinking that guy we played with before was a psychopath, only invited girls to the campaign to see if he could hit on them, and when he doesn't, he will kick him instead. The only one he didn't do this with was friend one, and as I said before, he took advantage of her in other aspects. Yeah, after that, I was pissed and decided to complain about the problems I had with the campaign to the DM, pretty aggressively, I may add, saying that either fix the issues or I'll make the ship sink. He said he'll fix it. He started, coincidentally, to cancel D&D sessions after my complaint, and then Mike and it, the only player that I was on good terms with, decided to leave. So, DM said he could continue the campaign with three players. I decided to just explode and say, F*** you, DM, and left the campaign and blocked him. So, for anyone that is having problems with the DM, and not just in the campaign, value your own sanity and self-esteem over a D&D game. And to DM, I know you'll eventually see this. I hope that your campaigns crash and burn. You deserve that. Whew, I feel stories like this even more now because just a couple weeks ago, I was at this wonderful house party where I encountered a man that acted very similar to people like this in real life. So, yeah, that was fun. Our paladin here takes a bit of a unique approach in that the whole incel dumb is not out of character. It's supposed to be in character. It's an incel paladin, not an incel player, right? The paladin's the one that believes all women belong in the kitchen. It's not me, it's my character. And while, yeah, having character flaws like that could be interesting, character flaws shouldn't go so far to make people feel uncomfortable or to be aggressively unlikable in the first place. Like D&D sessions are long and playing with somebody that's making a fool of themselves for hours upon hours, it's not fun. Even if you mean to develop the character in the future, no one is going to care about that long term if in the short term your character is extremely unlikable. Also, yeah, this DM is not just a passive observer, they're an active enabler. I agree with the OP, it sounds cruel, but DM... Dang, you messed up. All right, and that's going to be it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed, then please do leave a like. If you want to see more of our content, then you can check out our Tavern Adjacent podcast, where we talk about all things TTRPGs. It's linked in the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Crispy's Tavern to get more of our content when it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down into the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment crash and burn to let me know you made it to the end of the video. Hey, by the way, if you want to send us your own horror stories, our email is down in the description. Send them that way for a chance to be featured in one of these videos, but even if you don't have any stories, in essence, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell.